Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined over distance by GR Dad. Yes, hello. How are things in Maryland, GR Dad? Springy. Yeah. Moving into summery. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I like it. Uh, so dear dad's taking care of some stuff in maryland this week i am in florida um man do we have a lot a lot a lot of stuff to talk about on this podcast not all good though trigger warning honestly mostly bad um Mm -hmm. it's not all terrible um so i'm recording a podcast remy it's like slurping up water in the background (laughs) He's like, that's why I just started <laughs> slurping. So this is our Voodoo Memorial podcast. And then also there was a mountain of stuff to talk about before that. So this is, this is going to be one. Of, honestly, it's going to be one of those podcasts where I'm like, this is going to be a two hour podcast. And then like it's 53 minutes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, anyway, there, I, have a, I have a long list even compared to my normally long lists. Wow. I know. So I wanted to pick a Voodoo themed cocktail for the cocktail of the week and so i was looking on pinterest and there's a cocktail called the voodoo down which is actually named after a song not our dog uh and it's sad but appropriate this cocktail was invented at 11 madison park where i have had dinner but i don't think you have we were gonna go have dinner there and then something came up and we could well, you had an up. event there mm-hmm. um it's a fancy restaurant in new york it was delish so anyway they invented this cocktail called the voodoo down so it is Bourbon, a little bit of rum, a little bit of St. Germain, which is elderflower liqueur, ginger syrup, honey syrup, lemon juice, orange bitters. So it's kind of like a whiskey sour, but a little, a little bit, bit different. Yeah, and, and like the elderflower, and it's kind of designed to be something that you can have with dinner, where it's like a little more gentle, and like the ginger is nice for kind of eating with. That, this is their backstory that I read about. It's called the Voodoo Down, though. So that I made one for myself maybe at like four this afternoon. Uh, I only drank half of it because it was four in the afternoon, but it was delish. I think so. we're underusing, um, underutilizing drinks with multiple types of alcohol. Multiple. Yeah. Uh, bourbon and rum is good. Yeah. Rum and something else is good. There's a drink called the Suffering Bastard, which has bourbon and gin in it. Yeah. It's actually a pretty good drink. And then there's a Long Island iced tea, which I think has 13 different kinds of liquor in it. Liquor it's in it. just you put everything in it and it's bad, but you don't care because you're drunk really fast. And it's called iced tea, so it sounds kind of harmless. But it's not. There's no iced tea in it. I don't know why Long Island is like the, <laughs> the source for this ab- abomination. Anyway, but there they don't you go. like it. That's the cocktail of the week. Um, That's good. They had lucked on a yeah, good name. They did. So, administrative corner. I was all excited for our administrative corner. Now everything has a sad tinge to it. But mm. I, so now I have two, two items on administrative corner. Um, the one that I was going to share before, which I will still share, is that we hit 150,000 followers on Twitter this week. Wow. That's pretty cool. Just a you know, sort of random number, but across I the I didn't threshold. know we had fewer than that. Week. <laughs> we have like 700,000 followers on Snapchat, though. Well, like that's Like active where, followers. That's where the real fans are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, kidding. It's where the Hold most Twitter, fans Twitter are. Twitter users, I'm kidding. I know. The Twitter users get a lot better experience <laughs> than... Yeah, it's much more of a group on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. The other thing that popped on here, so obviously so we're recording on Wednesday. Um, you know, we lost Voodoo on Tuesday, and that's all we were dealing with. And we'll we'll get into the whole thing. But um, you know, I got home from that at like three in the afternoon, and then we we were both just sad about it. And that's what we did <laughs> was be sad about it. Um, and I logged on today and someone had messaged me and said, oh, you know, I donated to the Golden Ratio Foundation in honor of foods. And I was like, that was really nice. And I logged in and hundreds of people donated to the Golden Ratio Foundation yesterday, which like I wasn't monitoring. I didn't expect it. Obviously, we didn't ask for it. Um, but that was just so nice that so many people, you know, did that to honor foods. And so... Um, I mean, one, I just wanted to say, like, thank you guys. The foundation helped pay for a lot of his medical bills 
um, over the last couple months, like since April, which have been a lot, right? He had two, I mean, he had two big clusters a couple weeks apart in April. And so he spent many, many days up at the spa in Miami, which was, you know, very expensive. And that included his MRI, I think maybe. Mm -hmm. It was one of those visits. Um, but I mean, it was those, those vet bills from April alone were like $10,000 and the foundation didn't pay for all of that, but it, it really helped. That was an expensive month. Uh, that's way more than we earn in a month. Yeah, I'm and, learning that like dogs' hospital stays are kind of like human hospital stays. <laughs> They're not cheap. They rent those beds yeah. out or those crates out at a premium. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you know, we had pet insurance for Voods, but all his problems were things that were pre-existing conditions for him before we got him, and so they don't cover any of that stuff. Um, so it, you know, we would have paid it, but we were talking about like. GR dad may be getting a second job to pay for literally <laughs> to help pay for voodoo's vet bills. Um, so it's, you know, having the security that sort of comes from you guys basically taking care of foods for that, that last month and a half, like it, it gave us more time with him and more relaxed time. So we're just really appreciate that. Um, but the foundation's not just for us to pay for our dogs. So, um, we had this big influx yesterday of people donating in honor of Voods. And so we took some of that and we made a donation to the American Kennel Club Canine Health Foundation. They have an epilepsy research initiative that funds research into treatments for dogs with epilepsy. Um, so I tweeted this today. You can look at their website to see the studies that they've funded, but they've done studies on like the genetics of epilepsy, like what makes some dogs susceptible, some stuff on treatments, looking at um, like CBD, all you people who tweet about CBD at me that I don't see because I have it blocked on Twitter because <laughs> I don't don't want to see all the CBD tweets. Um, they did fund a study on like cannabinoids or, you know, some sort of um, cannabis derived stuff and like, does it help and what dosage would dogs need? So they, they funded a bunch of research on it, which is pretty cool. So we donated to them from the foundation, um, to help other dogs who have epilepsy too, because it sucks. Yeah. And I've <clears throat> like with Remy and Manchego, I learned, I've learned a lot about diabetes. Now I've learned a lot about epilepsy and it just really sucks. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. No. And uh, you know, I think a lot of people, every time we would post about Woods having seizures, people, you know, generally people who didn't follow us super closely would come in and be like, my dog took phenobarbital and that took care of everything. And it's like, man, we're on phenobarbital and four other medicines <laughs> for this. Or like, have you tried CBD? Like, you think we spent $30,000 on neurology bills last year and didn't talk to the neurologist <laughs> about CBD? Like, you know... I it's of course very tempting to be like, Hey, here's a thing that might help. But man, like we tried everything and it, there's just not something to help a lot of the time. But right? it made there's... me who lacks imagination really for the first time, really think about how horrible it is for humans to have. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, you know, Voodoo wasn't self-aware. He, I don't think he was sitting around being worried about his next seizure, but if you're a human, holy crap. Yeah, that's, that's a right. big sword to be hanging over your head all the time. We have like no control over it. Yeah, for sure. It's horrible. So, so let's get into dog updates, and we'll talk about Voods um, first. So, Voods had a seizure on Saturday morning at like six a.m., and this is right when Inga was leaving to go up to Maryland, and it goes like, course. "I could, I could stay," and I was like, "It doesn't matter. Our vet down here." Um, our local vet has been doing, they've sort of opened to do after hours emergencies on call for current patients. So it's not like a regular ER that's just open and you show up, but if you're a patient, you can call them and it seems like they're kind of open 24 hours to deal with that stuff now. So I was like, if I have to bring him in, I can just bring him there. We don't have to go to Miami. It'll be fine, right? Like it's a thing I can manage. And he didn't have any more seizures on Saturday, which was pretty great and he didn't have any seizures sunday and that was great and he didn't have any seizures monday so it was like yeah. wow <laughs> that's this is good and when he was up at the neurologist in miami uh last time in the middle of april about a month ago 
they had started him sort of as a last ditch effort, started him on a fifth seizure medication. So he had been on phenylbarbital, Keppra, zonisamide, and potassium bromide for a long time. And, you know, they weren't really working. I mean, it probably would have been worse without them, but they weren't controlling his seizures. Yeah. And so they're like, well, let's add in Topamax. This is a human medicine. Um, and let's see what that does. And it was sort of a last ditch thing for us because he had had these two clusters two weeks apart. And it's like, if he's having seizures every two weeks and every time he has one, he has to go up to Miami for like five days and then has to recover. Like he barely gets recovered before he's doing it again. So we were kind of in the window of like, you know, why are we putting him through this? So we're like, sure, we'll try another medicine. So over the weekend, it was like, maybe the Topamax has worked. He didn't have any seizures for a month and then he just had one. That would be great. It would be great if he just had one seizure a month. That's considered controlled. That's awesome. We don't have to take him to the hospital for that. Um, and then uh, at about 6 a.m. on Tuesday, he had another seizure. He kind of came into the bedroom. He had gotten me up at like 5.15. Uh, who is that barking? Bink? Brody. Bink. It's Brody. He's <clears throat> in the kitchen because he had a second dinner, and now he's like, I would like you to let me out of the kitchen. <laughs> Just suck it up, Brody. Um, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> so Foods woke me up at like 5.15 on Tuesday morning. Um, and I let him out and he peed and came back in. And then, of course, Brody's like, you know what? Now that you mentioned it, I would also like to go out. And so I took Brody out and got back into bed and was like trying to go back to sleep and then kind of hear this rustling sound. And I look and Foods is over on Ingo's side of the bed and has kind of jumped up. So he's got his, you know, front paws up on the bed, which isn't a thing he does often, but sometimes. Uh, but he can't stand up like that very long because back legs don't work. So I was like, all right, Boots, I'm coming over. So I kind of crawl across the bed to, you know, get over Drag there so I can lift up. up his butt. Yeah. And when I kind of got my face by him, he was really startled. He kind of was like, whoa, and like jumped back. And I was like, oh, he can't see me right now. Like he didn't see me coming. I'm like, I wonder if he's actually like getting ready to have a seizure because they can be blind before they have a seizure that like pre, pre-ictal phase before the seizure starts happening. Um, so I lifted his butt up and got him up on the bed. And I mean, he was 30 seconds and then he had another, he had his first seizure of Tuesday morning and uh, it was a big called one. you. Yeah, it was a big one. I called you and woke you up and it was just like, all right, you know, just, you know, what we're dealing with basically. Um he had, when he has seizures, the neurologist gives us kind of three days of medication. So we give, in addition to all his normal stuff, he gets an extra dose of Keppra and he gets clorazepate three times a day. And you do that for three days. So he had had his last dose at midnight, you know, basically six hours before the seizure. So I called the neurologist and I was like, so do we start that again? <laughs> like, do we give him more now? Like, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do. And they're like, we'll definitely like give him extra Keppra right now. And then, you know, we'll check and we'll call you back. Um, so he was okay. Like sometimes he'll have these seizures and he literally can't walk after them. And he was okay. So if you watch the snaps from Tuesday, you'll see him that, you know, in the morning, um, you know, after the seizure, I took him out and he's kind of, you know, walking around, <laughs> walked up on the dock and was like, maybe I'll jump off the dock and go for a swim. Um, you know, he was okay. He's, you know, obviously been declining in like the weekend and stuff. He was a little weird, which is not unusual after seizures. And he was, you know, a little weird even for him on Tuesday. Um, I went out for a run and I came back and I was just kind of hanging out with all the dogs on the porch and at like 1030, he had another seizure out on the porch. Um, that's kind of close together for him. Like usually when he has the multiple seizures, they'll be like 10 hours apart, 12 hours. Um, they have been getting closer. So when you took him up to Miami, was that the mid-April trip? He actually had a seizure in the car. He had a seizure and you went yeah. and then he had another one in, you know, two hours later in the car. That's right. Um, that was the third one though, right? He'd already had two like eight hours apart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's not a thing that he had been doing, you know, he mm -hmm. had, um, you know, he, they normally were more spaced out than that. 
Um, so this was really close. So I called our vet here and I was like, you know, just so you know, we're bringing him in for emergency. This is what's going on. And they were like, okay. I'm like, you can call the neurologist and they'll tell you all the stuff to do. Okay. And I was like, by the way, I'm already supposed to come in at noon with hops and vink. Do you want me to just bring them with, you know, it's like 1030 at this point. Um, or, you know, I can certainly bring foods in and then come back with hops and vink at noon. And they were like, no, nah, just bring them. It's fine. So I get all three dogs into the car. I go up there and uh, I just left Vink and Hops in the car, you know, with the air conditioning on while I brought sure. Voods in. Because I'm like, the last thing I need is <laughs> like managing three dogs, including Voods, who, I mean, hasn't been able to stand up without help for three or four weeks, right? I mean, he if he really tries, he can get himself up, but he can't. couldn't really stand. Not even for treats, um, yeah. No, just the back legs weren't working. And even when he did stand, I mean, he would lean way over to one side. He'd just kind of fall down. And, you know, we didn't film a ton of it, but you can see it in the snaps. Like if he's standing, he's he was not stable at all. I think even so on really those Tuesday snaps, he like goes out on the grass and then kind of fall. His butt kind of falls down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there have been times in the last month where we've had to have the help him up harness on him. Um, and then especially after the seizure, like on Saturday after the seizure, um, you know, all day Saturday, if he had to do his business out in the yard, I had to hold his butt up. So we had some real intimate times, <laughs> me and Boots, where I was like, oh, he's got to do some business. All right, here I come. I'll hold your butt so you don't fall in it. Um, so I brought him in and they're like, okay, you know, we'll take him back. And um, eventually I went out and got Hops and Vink um, and then was just kind of waiting for like an hour. And eventually... Uh, Dr. Faith, who longtime Golden Ratio followers will know, she's the surgeon who removed Parmesan's big tumor. Uh, and we sent her a big thank you because like, hey, it wasn't cancer. I mean, he died anyway a month later. But she was like, I think we can save this dog. Like, let's try this. And we were like, great, try it. Like, you know, what he's going to die anyway yeah, really soon. It was right? a matter of days and then it turned into a month. So that was good. Yeah. Um, so she, she has switched practices. She now has her own practice, which is this one that is doing emergency. And, uh, she had been treating voodoo. She was the one doing acupuncture on him and, you know, had been seeing him, um, for a long time. And, uh, so she came out and sat down and she's like, so he's in bad shape. And I was like, oh, an event says that to you. <laughs> like, yeah. like a vet, vet will never tell you it's time to put your dog down. I mean, maybe if it's really extreme, but, but generally they're like, you know, these are the options that, you know, we can do this or this or this or this And let, you know, if your dog's in tremendous pain or whatever, they'll be like, look, like the only humane thing that we can do here is this, but it, I've never had a vet tell me, oh yeah, you definitely have to do this now. Like they'll agree when I say I want to, but they don't usually tell you what to do. Yeah. And she wasn't telling me what to do, but she came out and was like, I mean, it was really clear. She's like, okay, so it's time. We had talked on the way uh, while I was driving him and kind of gone like, well, you know, like, this is not great, but, yeah. you know, let's see what we can do and then we'll talk about what it. What did she say? He's not the same dog as he was three months ago. Yeah, I mean, that, it's been about three months since she'd seen him and he's like, he's a completely different dog. And and of course, if you like go back and watch the snaps, like you can tell that he's different. She's like, he's got... When he was, was, a, like, when well, he was he, in that class with Remy, right? And he was like a much different dog. Yeah. Remember how active yeah, he was? Yeah, you look at... Interested? And just like them playing in the yard. Mm -hmm. That was January, right? You compare that to now. Oh, yeah. So different. Um yeah, so he's, she's like, he's a completely different dog. Like, he looks like he's lost weight. And it was, yeah, he's lost a lot of weight. Um, she's like, he's got, you know, obviously he can't walk. Um, she's like, he's got a lot of edema in his back legs, which is a thing that, <laughs> excuse me, we would see when he'd come out of the clinic in Miami. They would be like, look, he's got a lot of edema. His back legs are swollen. It will get better. And I have noticed even, you know, well after he's been home from Miami, that his back legs are swollen. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not huge, but they're definitely puffy. They start out and big. So, I mean, when, was, when, and when he'd come back from Miami, they'd be really kind of thick. Yeah, they, they'd puff up a lot more because he wouldn't be moving, right? Like, yeah. he just lay in the crate the whole time, and, and so then you're not kind of getting the fluid out of there. Um, 
So yeah, it would be bigger then, but like you shouldn't have that at all. Right. <laughs> anytime. Right. Um, and yeah, so he, you know, I, I would notice it at home sometimes be like, oh, he is kind of puffy back there. And she's like, here's the thing. We keep trying to put an IV in him, which they have to do no matter what we're going to do, whether we're going to put him down or whether we're going to treat him for his seizures, they have to get an IV in him because he gets a drip of IV anticonvulsant medicine to treat the seizures or you you know, inject the medicines to put them down with an IV. She's like, we pu- try to put an ID- IV in his back leg and it just, all the edema, which is just like fluid inside your leg, inside your tissues, like all, that edema fluid's coming out instead. Like we can't get an IV in there. And I was like, okay, so we're kind of talking and I was like, you know, and Ingo, I mean, you had brought this up, right? Like we really, if she's there, we need to get her feelings on it because she's she wanted to do surgery on parmesan right like a dog who clearly was like at his very end and was like maybe we could do something for this dog so she's absolutely not going to be like uh well yeah there's stuff we could do but like is it really worth it for you like she wants to do the thing to see the dog didn't she have an epileptic dog wasn't that her she did yeah yeah i mean so she gets and uh yeah she does and uh, so when she was like, oh, well, this is not good and he's in a terrible state and like, n- you know, none of this should be happening. It was like, okay. Um, I was pretty quickly convinced like, okay, this is one of those things where it's like, we know it's bad. I mean, we have been talking for a couple months about like, when is it going to be time for Voods and sort of assessing every day and having some days where it's like, if it keeps going like this, it's probably time. And then, you know, he'll be Okay. But we knew it was coming. And after talking to her, it's like, it's one of those things where like someone who hasn't seen him for a while can very profoundly see what's going on where us taking care of him every day, even though we go, okay, he can't stand up anymore without help. And he can't reliably walk without falling over and needing help. And I'm holding his butt up when he has to pee. And he's having accidents in the house, which started happening this weekend. And, you know, he's not really connecting and, you know, all this stuff. It's like it's getting a little worse every day or every week, but you don't notice it as profoundly if as you're watching the incremental little changes. So after talking to her, I was like, all right, I guess it's time. I mean, this all makes sense. And, you know, I mean, if they can't even get an IV in him to to prevent another seizure, that's a big problem, right? That's like an immediate issue. Yeah. So I, you know, I called you and we kind of talked through it and we're like, okay. And then went back in and it turns out we didn't need to have that agonizing decision because they could not get an IV in him. I mean, we were there for two and a half hours and she came out and she's like, I'm the person that they come to when nobody can get an IV into a dog. (laughs) In 20 years of being a vet and working in emergency medicine, working daytime medicine, I have never not been able to get an IV in a dog and we can't get one in him. She's like, every vein he has, has been used for his treatments up in Miami. She's like, there are multiple poke marks around every vein. Every vein is scarred, closed. Uh, All the ones in his legs we can't get, you know, they've all been used and he's got all the edema and every other vein. She's like, that's why he's shaved all over because they've had to go to every other vein to get something in there. And there's nothing we can't get it there's no veins left there's nothing there's nothing we can put an IV and we can't get one in him so even if we had decided like treat this seizure and then we'll make a decision it wasn't an option like we they had to give him just like a regular shot of an anticonvulsant because they thought he was going to have a seizure while he was waiting in back and they couldn't give him any medicine intravenously so we didn't like the option was not there to do the treatment that we've been doing with him in Miami and that we would have to have done. So then the choices are we could put him down yesterday or we could bring him home and let him die of the seizures, which is just horrific, just a horror show. Uh, Yeah. We always, that that was always the thing we were going to do anything to avoid him dying of a seizure during a seizure. Cause that's just inhumane. That's just terrible. That's just so terrible. So, you know, so we had had these, 
you know, many agonizing conversations over the course of the day. And then it turns out we didn't have to because the choice it ended up being was you can do it now or you can let them die at home a really terrible death. And so, of course, we were going to do that. The problem is they use an IV to give them the medication to put them down, right? They normally will like put an IV in and then they'll give them propofol, which makes them fall asleep. And it's a really, you know, I've had it when I've had surgery. It's, it makes you feel very peaceful. It's a really nice medicine to fall asleep to. <laughs> um, if you've had surgery, you've probably had this. It's like the first shot that they give you and you just kind of like float into a very nice sleep. And, uh, and then once they're out, they then give the euthanasia drug both into the IV. And one of the doctors there thought maybe he had been able to get an IV, but it didn't work. Like they tried putting the medicine and it didn't do anything. So they ended up having to give him a different kind of medicine, just like an intramuscular injection, just a syringe, like injected into his leg, not into a vein. And then wait like 15 minutes for him to kind of be sleepy. He wasn't like full on asleep. I mean, he didn't know what was going on. He couldn't see anything. Um, but his eyes were open, like he was blinking. Yeah. But, you know, he wasn't, you know, his head was in my lap. Like he wasn't responsive. He was snoring really heavy. So he was, she, she kind of described it as like a sort of twilight sleep. He wasn't, you know, didn't seem like he knew what was going on, but it took a long time. Mm -hmm to get him there, you know, you have to let that like get absorbed and kick in. And then it's like, they have to give him the euthanasia drug and they can't do it in the IV. She's like, you know, we can't, we don't have the IV to do it in. So we can inject it in his kidneys. And then it's like, you wait 45 minutes and it works. We can inject it directly into his heart. And she's like, you don't want to be here for this. I'm like, you fucking, yes, I do. Like, I'm not leaving my dog here with you. No, right. like. That's the whole point. I'm, I am staying. So they, they brought like an ultrasound in and they did give him an injection in his kidneys. And, and then it's like, you have to wait. And we're just waiting. I was like, just give him the other shot. I mean, he wasn't suffering. He was just sleeping on my lap. He was totally fine. But I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, I don't, like, I'm not squeamish about this i don't care like okay you're gonna put the needle in his chest instead of in his back like just do it um and and so she did and then you know it was just like when they get it in the IV, like it was very fast and he was gone uh yeah so now he's gone stubborn till the end man <clears throat> <laughs> you're not kidding like the most foods way to make it difficult uh, I am not crying now because I have just been crying for like 24 hours. But I was, I was like, I'm not going to get to sing him the Pinto Bean song anymore. No. As you know, I'm going to cry again. Yeah. I mean, he's just such a big presence. It's going to suck. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to sing it to him at the vet twice and it was the saddest thing. Like trying to sing the Pinto Pinto Bean oh, you're song. Crying. I was like crying over him. Oh, that was Not so sad. Not helping, Jen. You're making him feel bad. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> um. And Hops and Vink were in the room, just kind of like they were there in the their whole own time. little world, doing their thing. Vink <laughs> absolutely was asleep. Everybody forgot she was there. She was like in a corner this asleep. A Hops at one point was like, "Would you also like to pet <laughs> no, me?" And we're like, "Fuck got, you, Hops! Not now." You had to reach over and pet Hops because she was all like, Meh. "Oh my god." Yeah, Inga was like video chatted yeah, like, in. This so. Is, this shows how in how dogs are just in their own heads in the moment doing their own little thing like nothing bothers them metaphysically they're just like eh how about i get petted she seemed now to, yeah she seemed to kind of know that something had happened but they were not really disturbed by it you know a little curious and when i got home like the other dogs were sniffing on me more than i mean guac and remy sniffing on me more than normal uh but it's always hard to tell like how much are you reading into that versus yeah. you know how much that they know what's going on but they're they are all doing okay um i told ingo i'm like the only thing is like you know foods has been begging for my dinner right i'll sit down on the couch like since you know for like the last three weeks 
And Vood's is like, well, hello. <laughs> and, and I, of course, give yeah. him whatever because I'm like, I don't know how long you're going to be around. And then Remy has used that as cover <laughs> to like climb up on the couch and try to eat off my plate. So now he's like, today he was trying to do it. And I was like, no, you got to back up. You got to do this. And he's like, why the hell is she paying so much attention to me? Why is this so me? hard today? Like, I used to be able to get away with this. <laughs> yeah. So I think he's missing his cover. Oh, you also, Vood's also had a whole, what, jar of peanut butter at the vet's. Oh yeah! They, so while they were trying to get the IV in him, I think they thought uh, you were joking were feeding... about the chocolate, but then they gave him peanut butter. Yeah, they they would put like peanut butter on a little uh, popsicle stick and give it to him, so he'd kind of you know leave him alone while they were fishing around for IVs. And then at some point, I mean, he was back there I mean, literally for three hours. Uh, like she came in and she's like, "Yeah, he's eating a whole jar of peanut butter." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Which is great. exactly what she'd like, want. Yeah. Why not? She's like, he also tried to eat the wooden tongue depressor that we're giving him the uh, the peanut butter I'm on. I'm sure like, well, somebody that's remembered that when he was getting acupuncture and the doctor had, he tried to had eat the like needles. a bunch of needles in her hand, open hand, and took one out to like stick in his head. He tried to eat all the needles in her hand. She's like, whoa, <laughs> what are you doing? All right, Ingo, you hold down the fort for a second. I'm going to let out CB because he's making a lot oh, of noise. Oh, no. Sorry. What, now I'm in charge? Oh, this is insane. Anyway, so my my observation would be I don't regret a single time that I picked up foods. I don't regret a single snack that I gave him. I uh, he I'm glad we gave him everything we could and, and more. Um, always. Always. It was way too short. It, I mean, it's not fair that we only hit him for two years. The guy, well, I thought he'd get better. I'd hoped he'd get better. Um, He's such a good man. And then he got worse. So I don't, I don't think it's fair. But yeah. you know, he will be terribly missed. He was a big personality. He had big food energy. Yeah. Uh, I was texting with my brother about it yesterday. He also lost a dog to epilepsy last summer. Different kinds of seizures. His dog would have lots and lots of like little seizures. Like um, like, a lot, like like hundreds, wasn't it? Like a hundred a day or something? They said he had like a hundred, hundred more than a hundred seizures Un- on the on his last day. Yeah. Um, so they weren't the big kind of screaming dramatic ones like Boot had, but still. Um, and... He was like, you know, in a couple months, you're going to look back and realize like how how much you were doing that you're not like waking up all the time in the middle of the night thinking the dog's having a seizure. And I was like, literally, I slept through the night last night and didn't wake up like three times thinking Boots was having a seizure, which happened all the time because he would like bark in the middle of the night and be like, I want to go out at 2.15 a.m. And, and anytime he makes a sound, it's like, is he having a seizure? No, he's just being a dick, uh, you know, and yeah, I mean, we had gotten to the point in the last month of like every time he wanted to stand up, we're lifting up his butt and, you know, walking next to him to make sure he doesn't fall over and trying to get that dog to come inside was an exercise in creativity and futility yeah, he also, at the same time. Like, besides he, being physically incapacitated, he's also just such a stubborn big pinto bean that he just didn't want to do things and, and would that would incapacitate him because he'd be just like, nah. He's just like, no. Nah, I'm just going to lie out now. Oh, it's, it's three in the morning. I just want to go back to bed. Please, this is not the time to lay in the grass. No. <laughs> Come on. No. And then you'd leave him there or bring him back in and then half an hour later he'd be like, I, I need to go out now. <laughs> I've decided yeah. now I would like to go out. Yeah, I mean, in... in Dr. Faith, you know, she was saying at some point yesterday, she's like, does his face normally twitch like that? Because his nose was twitching. I was like, it does that all the time. She's like, that's actually this other kind of seizure. And I was like, yeah, you know, we we sort of had hypothesized at some point that might be what's going on because he's had some, you know, real dips in his functionality. She's like, all this together definitely can be causing brain damage in him. Yeah. Um, which makes sense. Not that he was ever super responsive <laughs> you know i was looking today i posted you know a little tribute to vood's thread on twitter i love where I he has had... the lamp in his tail by the way that's that was the funniest <laughs> one he would have walked I had around forgotten all day about this thing. lamp he had a like a hurricane lantern 
uh, <laughs> that he'd wagged across and his tail fur had gotten twisted around it. So he's just playing with guac, with dragging this big ass lantern <laughs> around on his tail. Uh, I discovered that yesterday. I'd completely forgotten it. But I pulled out the snaps from the day you brought him home. And, uh, you know, he kind of jumps out of the car and, and I'm like, I was taking him for a walk. I was like, so on the first day we have dogs, we often take them out for a walk. And, you know, we're going to take Voods for a walk. I don't know how far he's going to be able to go, but he did just eat a pair of my running socks. And, you know, hopefully he won't do that again. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, just from the first day, you know, he, you know that uh, he was going to do it again. Um, but he was so much more like engaged and responsive, even though, you know, he was a huge and you know he was real chonky and you know had a lot of problems that needed stabilizing he was way more engaged than i guess, I guess than now. we should have figured I'd, like even though the fact even though he lost like 40 pounds by the end he wasn't any more dynamic or bouncy right that's a real sign if he yeah. if he'd if we'd taken him on day one and, and subtracted 40 pounds he would have been like get just running all the time right yeah, i mean and, and, and that yeah and, you know, he was limping when we got him because he had that partial tear in his CCL, his cruciate ligament, which we had repaired last summer. Yeah. And he hasn't been limping since then. He hasn't <sighs> been mobile. He had, His mobility didn't improve, but his limping did. So, like, his problems when we got him, I mean, obviously his legs were really weak because he never went outside. He was very overweight and he had a partial tear in his leg and we fixed all those things and he still didn't get more mobile because he got more damaged and kind of lost control. Yeah. I, I guess we probably prolonged his mobility through those measures, but it always seemed like it For wasn't sure. fixing anything. It just kind of, he still was bad. But Can you imagine him trying, like if he had that tear and those 40 pounds, trying to get up or walk around like he was. I mean, we absolutely would have to have put him down no. sooner. Because occasionally he'd like he go down able. the stairs. Even a week ago, he would like when he was motivated. Oh, he'd parkour down the stairs. He made it. It was clean terrifying. once. He had a one clean run that one time when he <laughs> that was, was like. Luck. That, that was luck. That was probably was. He was he was balancing just right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It lined up well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pinto Bean. Mm -hmm. So anyway, thank you to everybody uh, for your support. You know, I've, I'm sure I've said before that like when we lose our dogs, it, when anybody loses a dog, like it's so devastating and you feel so bad when your dog dies. And then if you're lucky, you have a few people in your life who understand. And then a lot of people who are like, oh, your dog died. Like, are you like, are you still coming to lead this meeting tomorrow like yeah. are you still sad about that are you oh you're getting a new dog now like they don't really understand and when one of our dogs dies um thousand tens of thousands of people join in with us and mourn him and and share their and memories yeah. and that's like i think everybody who loses a dog they want the universe to be that upset about it <laughs> you know where it's like both Voods and Pinto Bean, and for a while, the phrase Jen and Ingo were trending on Twitter. <laughs> no, which is really amazing. Because that's how many, that's how big a deal it is that like that many people are talking about it and upset about it. And like that's the magnitude of grief I think everybody has when they lose a dog. And and we actually get a, a reaction along with us that is in magnitude with how sad we are and like nobody else really gets that right like we're so lucky to have this community of really wonderful supportive people who who can join with us and and feel that bad and we all kind of get it I feel not that we want to make people feel I was bad gonna say, i don't feel great about making thousands of people unhappy <laughs> <laughs> It's great. The life is terribly unfair that, that dogs don't live long enough. It really is. I mean, it's a great and especially ours. reminder for, for humans that, that stuff doesn't last forever and appreciate every day, but it's a rough way to remind people. Yeah. It's rough. All right. So, but anyway, I'll miss carrying him around because that was still... I'm sure we will... Uh... He's too big for you. It, to that was the good part. I could still pick him up. He's like still <laughs> kind of my baby if I could pick him up, you know. 
boodle them around. Toby. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the Vood story. I'm sure we'll be talking more about Vood's. Uh, unfortunately, or whatever, th- that was not even on my list of many things to talk about with dogs. Didn't need to be on the list, though. You weren't going to forget. Right. Uh, yeah, no. Come on. Uh, there's just a lot of other stuff. Okay, so... Is uh, it boring? Do I need pe- to, like, reverse the charges and tell you it's boring? It's boring. Are you bored? No, I don't know what you're going to talk about. How can oh, I be no. bored? I'm, I'm ready to move on. It's not I boring. I will say... Well, no, there is one boring thing. So ah. some people were like, you didn't talk about this last week on the podcast. So one of them was like, guac ate Vood's meds. There's just nothing to say. Like, Vood's meds, one of his pill pockets bounced out of his bowl one day and guac ate it and then was a little bit sleepy. Not even dramatic. That's it. it wasn't, he wasn't very no. loopy or... He wasn't slurring. He was fine. He wasn't anything. He'll do yeah, it again. Yeah, we didn't talk about it because like... He'll do it again. <laughs> that was the entirety of the story. <laughs> the one thing that I should have talked about last week that I didn't was Brody eating the blinds in the bedroom. Yes. Uh, so it, our friend Bahia came over and guac goes apoplectic when bahia is here bahia if we barks, let him out and that reminds guac she that barks. there's another dog yeah and yeah she comes to play fetch and the problem is guac is a dick about fetch and so if he's out there he will not let her get her toy he'll drop whatever he has we can throw three balls at once he needs the one that bahia has so he can't come out because it's just not fun with him out there but then he goes bat shit crazy in the house and his favorite thing to do is jump up on the dresser in the bedroom and look out the window. Can, yeah, that gets but him like, above the windowsill, right? There's like a bunch of glass stuff on the dresser. He doesn't care. I'm shocked he hasn't knocked it off. And so I've gotten in the habit of closing the bedroom door when Bahia comes over so he can go apoplectic in the living room, but he's not going to break anything and it's fine. Um, and so Bahia was coming over and Hops and Brody were asleep in the bedroom and I was like... I'm, I've got to close this door. Keep on sleeping, boys. So I just closed it. Yeah, boys and girls. Yeah, closed it with them in there. Um, went out and played with Bahia and came back up and opened the door. And they were, Hops and Brody were both standing right there. <laughs> and I stick my head in. And Brody, who has a, a trauma from his past about being locked up that sometimes manifests particularly in him trying to chew his way out of being locked up. He's chewed through baby gates. He tried to chew the door yeah. once. That came out with him eating the blinds in the bedroom. So we've got a like bamboo shades and we've got one that goes over the sliding glass door uh, in the bedroom. It was down and he just shredded like half of it into tiny little bamboo toothpicks. <laughs> Yeah. Because he's like, I don't want to be locked up in here. Get me out of here. And I'm going to eat something until I, I get know, out. No, it's not even, he doesn't even care about Bahia. Like, that's a totally different thing than guac. No. <laughs> he's welcome to come down and just generally doesn't want to. He just didn't want to be locked yeah. up. And <laughs> and there's times where he doesn't, where he hasn't even been panicked, right? He just wants to come out and can't and puts his mouth on the thing and starts yeah. chewing. It's clearly... It's one of those things where that we see, you know, variations of that theme a lot with dogs that we get where it's some trauma from his past life that's clearly a habit that he picked up at some point in his past life and did a bunch. Yeah. And it doesn't come out that much with us, but we'll, we can occasionally will put them in situations accidentally that like reactivate that. Yeah, Remy hates to um, be pulled. He, especially tied up. Like when we were shooting that Verbo thing, I, we were trying to like, we had all this stuff and all these dogs, we were trying to load them in the car and I just tied his leash around a post in the yard and you all of a sudden saw him settle into like this barking and anxiety and like freak out, which of course, right? Like he was just on a chain for five years before. So of course he has trauma and also really comfortable, familiar patterns of expressing that as soon as he's chained up against a post, right? And I just didn't even think about it. And then it was like, I did that. And as soon as I did it, I was like, oh, like, <laughs> this isn't just he doesn't want to be on the post now. Like, you can see that this is a thing he's done for years and years yeah. and just popped right back into that place. It's an interesting thing with these dogs who come from kind of traumatic backgrounds that we see sometimes. Anyway, Brody ate the blinds. And then, oh, and then Guac, who enjoys jumping on things, but you're trying to combat that now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Uh, anyway, so 
Um, he did not jump on the dresser because he was locked out. Yep. So that's good. Um, in other CB news, so he went to the vet on Monday, which seems like such a long time ago, but it was just Monday. We had three dogs at the vet, Hops and Vink and Brody. We'll talk about Hops and Vink in a minute. But Brody has just been like right now he's kind of standing here panting. If Ingo were here, he'd be holding his mic up to Brody's mouth. Uh, usually that doesn't actually pick up very well. But hi, CB, you're a good boy. He's like standing right here looking at me. Has he had second dinner? He's he been has. getting... Yeah, that's what he was barking about. He was left in the kitchen. Um, getting kind of anxious in the middle of the day. He's gained a lot of weight back, even though we haven't been feeding him more and his activity has been we've the same. We've just been spreading out dinner. That's The second dinner is not a full second dinner. It's part, like we've been kind of adjusting it so it's part of yeah. first dinner. That's right. Um, yeah, and, you know, just kind of like weird and panicky sometimes. And I was like, I'm going to take him to the vet and just, you know, it's so nebulous, right? Like, I don't really know. He just seems yeah, weird. Seems off. Like, please yeah. figure it out. Um, but they did, they did x-rays. Everything looks fine. Like they didn't see anything that looked like a tumor. Um, and they did a thyroid recheck, which is, was Ingo, that was your thought, which is a great idea. Cause that could definitely have something to do with the weight gain. Cause he's on thyroid yeah. meds. Um, and they did a, a, you know, a whole bunch of blood work. So we don't have those results yet, but they took that on Monday. But when we were in there, you know, she was, this is a different vet, Dr. Stacy, who's also awesome. She was giving him a, you know, just a full checkup and she was poking at the sore on his callus, which is why he's had the sleeve on for like a month. And she's like, has he been licking this? And I was like, Oh, Dr. <laughs> Stacy, <laughs> he has been licking at that thing for like two years. I have had a sleeve on him. I mean, he wore the sleeve into the car on the vet drive. I took it off just to go into the vet. I'm like, he tries to lick it through the sleeve, you know, yeah. like, uh, we cannot get it to heal. Like we try protecting it. We have elbow baths. We put powder on it. We do all this stuff. I cannot get it to heal up. And she's like, well, you know, we probably, you know, let's, we can do some, you know, like give him some sedation and basically close it up so that it's, you know, it's a kind of bump on the callus and then it's raw on the top. And she's like, it's, you know, the, what we would hope is that the skin is going to grow back over it and it'll close up. And that just isn't happening. She's like, we may just need to like take it down and then stitch it up. So there's, you know, there's basically a, we close the skin and then it will heal. Cause it's, you know, not healing. Now we have done yeah. everything. Um, and I was like, great, do it. And she's like, we should probably send it off for a biopsy. And I was like, do everything. Yeah. I said, he has insurance and we have money. <laughs> <laughs> like just do everything so we can figure out what's going on with him. So, you know, it's nothing like super urgent and terrible, but he's notably more agitated something you know and notably heavier and whatever i mean this callus thing has been a problem for a long long time yeah. so i'm not super worried about it but maybe it's a thing i don't know um so anyway he's going in for surgery on monday and get that taken care of so he'll probably have his sleeve back on right it's fine and monday was when hopper and bank went in for their moore's animal foundation thing yes nice segue hey, Ingo. Go. so uh, yes, Hops and Vink are part of the Morris Animal Foundation Golden Retriever Lifetime Study. We did a whole episode on that one time, um, and I know we've talked about it a ton. So basically, it's 3,000 Golden Retrievers. The Morris Animal Foundation has a big study that follows them across their life. So Hops and Vink enrolled when they were each six months old. Hops is one of the first dogs. Vink is one of the Jeez, last dogs. I, th I think it's 2,999 Golden Retrievers and Vink. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> and Vink. she was added at the last minute. <laughs> She, she did squeak in at the end there. Um, and you, they do like genetic testing. They've, you know, we've talked about the surveys a bunch of times where you have to be like, how many tablespoons of carrots do they eat on average Where's every day? From? And then, yeah, what kind of pipes do you have? Are they plastic pipe, PVC pipes, copper pipes, lead pipes, municipal water, well water? Do they drink out of a lake? Where do they swim? Do they swim in the ocean? Do they swim in puddles? Do they swim in pools? What kind of toys do they have? Yeah, how many? Yeah. How often? <laughs> Are you measuring in cups or grams or whatever? And it's, oh my god! 
I, I had been putting off during the survey, but I did it. And you've got to do it for both of them. And I'm like, could you just copy, either copy last year's answers and let me change them or copy Hopper's answers to Vink and let me change them? No, <laughs> I have to do the whole damn thing. Um, <laughs> and it takes like 45 minutes per dog. And uh, You were so nice. <laughs> it's it's important science. The this point of the study is to figure out the origins of cancer in dogs. And they picked golden retrievers because goldens get a lot of cancer, unfortunately. Um, so they have basically every environmental diet, genetic medical thing, every medicine that dogs takes, every vaccine they get, every sort, everything that happens in these dogs' lives, they have for 3000 dogs for the entire course of their lives. So if anybody's going to figure it out, man, they're going to figure it out here. Um, when Hopper had her leg amputated, they asked for the leg. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we have a biopsy kit, you know, if either of them need anything biopsied and, uh, when they, we ended up not sending the leg, by the way, they, no, they ended up sending a sample of the leg or maybe they got a Would lab report. Funny. Um, we almost got it for a freezer. They, they were like, can we have the leg? <laughs> the <surgeon> was like, <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> kind of morbid question is that? Um, and then when they die, eventually you have to do an autopsy or, you know, it's animal. So it's a necropsy. So we actually have a hopper T dog necropsy kit in the house. Um, cause I wasn't sure about how things were going to go with her, which we'll talk about. She's okay though. Um, but yeah, so they both, in addition to all the surveys and stuff, then they do an annual exam where they take like 12 vials of blood and hair clippings and poop samples and urine samples and nail clippings. And they measure their height and their weight and all this stuff. If you're lucky. Yeah, they, they always forget to measure the height and I always have to take the dogs back, which is why we went in with Hops and Vink and Brody on Monday and then Hops and Vink came back with Voods on Wednesday because they forgot to measure their height. And I was like, yeah, it's fine. I'll bring them back in. Um, I had to bring a urine sample for Vink anyway because she, she she refused to pee. She must have peed like on the way into the vet because she didn't pee and they're like, well, we can just take some out with a needle. And then they're like, nope, nothing in there. So she's empty. And Vink was like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and Can I come back again? It's funny, when I brought her back <laughs> Wednesday, like, you know, while we were dealing with all the voodoo stuff, they were doing, finishing up the study stuff and they brought Vink back and they're like, she didn't have any urine again. And I was like, oh, well, here you go. I brought you a jar of it. So <laughs> I had a plastic grocery bag that had one urine and two pe poop samples in it. And I was like, here's a bag of nastiness. And they're like, oh, this is great. <laughs> it was in smaller containers within the bag though you didn't just have a bag of undifferentiated no goop. no it was in oh, smaller gross. Containers. It's, it's all disgusting um so anyway they did their science which is awesome and now we're good till next year um and then hops hops went to the vet on saturday it, so aside from all this morris animal foundation stuff on saturday when voods had his seizure and Inga was leaving for Maryland, we both noticed that Hopper's abscess was coming back on her leg. So in our last podcast, I was like, where are my damn antibiotics? They have not come yet. The MRSA ones. The MRSA yeah. ones. Um, so she went like a full week basically without any treatment. And not surprisingly, the abscess started coming back. So uh, the medicine did come on Saturday. And I will talk more about that in a second. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is going to be a long one, Jen. It is. It is. Uh, we're already at 53 minutes, so. <laughs> pull up a chair. Get a drink. Oh, I need a drink, man. Um, so, so yeah, we both noticed that there's a lump on Hopper in the same general area where there wasn't before. So I bring her up there to the vet on Saturday morning thinking, oh, do we have to drain this thing again? Whatever. And... Uh, they're like, no, we don't have to drain it. But the vet up there was looking at her. This is our vet in Marathon, so it's slightly farther away. And she's like, you know, it's it's mostly just inflamed tissue. There's not a lot of gunk in there at this point. So it doesn't really make sense to, you know, cut it open to drain it. Um, but she was kind of giving her a once over. And she's like, why is her mouth green? And I'm like, lady... <laughs> We have been asking that question for years. Nobody who knows? knows our mouth is green. She likes it. <laughs> Everybody does think it's somehow bacteria related, right? That it's sort of a moist part of her mouth and it just harbors bacteria. Um, and she's like, you know, with the MRSA infection, like we're going to treat this, but it's the kind of thing where like it can keep coming back. 
And it's going to be really important to keep her bacterial loads down everywhere to minimize the chance of infection. She's like, because the MRSA bacteria are kind of around and then anytime she gets any inflammation, it's an opportunity for them to start an infection. So um, it's important. So, you know, she obviously like has these kind of skin conditions and she's like, you know, normally I would put her on Apoquil, but Apoquil isn't recommended for dogs that have had cancer because it's an immune system suppressant. And so it can cause the tumors to come back. Um, so we may eventually put her on Cytopoint. I think they're kind of looking into how that would work with her cancer history. Um, but you don't want her getting any skin inflammation, which she always gets and has had. Um, her girl bits, mm, always a little bit iffy. I'd be upset mm-hmm. if mine looked like that. I mean, if I were a well, dog. Well, you're not a dog. <laughs> if, <laughs> if they looked like that as a human, it would also be weird. Um, but if, <laughs> if they had the same kind of difficulties as hers, I would also be quite uncomfortable. Um, that has been a lifelong thing with her. And then the green has been off and on for a lot of years. So they shaved the sides of her mouth that were green. And... Um, Now we have to do chlorhexidine wipes, which look kind of like, um, ear wipes. Yeah. yeah, Like ear wipes. I was thinking more like, I want to say noxema pads, but noxema is the wrong word. Uh, yeah, it's the acne stuff. Yeah. Like the, the pads. I don't know. I don't know if they even still have those. They did when I was a kid in the nineties. They're round. Yeah. The round little cotton pad kind of things. Um, so twice a day, we're supposed to do that on her girl bits and on her mouth. And then we have a antibacterial ointment for her mouth that apparently is effective against MRSA, but they don't want to put the ointment on the bits because they'll be damp. So we have to use a chlorhexidine foam on the bits and then medicated the baths. Moose? The moose. Yep. Uh, I the got a moose. bunch and go wait till you get home and see all the stuff I got. <laughs> She's also supposed to have antibacterial Ugh. baths, the ones where you suds them up and let it sit for 10 minutes, three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of ever it takes like 15 minutes to soak hopper like yeah. and then it's just she is just a big sponge for everything mm-hmm. it is a, and it takes 15 minutes to to rinse her of the shampoo too i mean it's a real process yeah we've talked about like are there is there any kids around here that we can hire to like do hopper's baths <laughs> yeah it's like wash my car wash my dog it's fine yeah um No, only old people live in Florida. (laughs) I was just thinking today, I was like, crap, like she really meant that. Like I need to give Hopper a bath tomorrow. Like I haven't given her a bath for a while. Um, So yeah, I bought like- Let her swim first. uh, I took her out on the paddleboard today, so that's good. That'll make her happy. But if you let her, it doesn't matter if you're going to give her a bath anyway to let her swim. That's true. There's a lot of jellyfish around. We're kind of having a little bloom (sighs) of the upside down jellyfish. Jellyfish of death. There was one literally sitting on her ramp today. I had to push oh. it out of the way with my paddle. Like, get you know off the ramp. what we should ramp. look up is how to kill those jellyfish. <laughs> That's probably illegal, man. You can't oh, kill on. a lot of stuff here. They're I'll, trespassing. All right. You make a note. You do that Googling. I'm pret- <laughs> oh, that's not as much fun at all. Can't we just talk about it? Um, right, yeah, I'll Google it. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, her abscess is doing fine still. So it, we're recording on Wednesday. She started her antibiotics. They arrived um, at like before we got home from the vet, before lunchtime on Saturday. So she's been, she got full three doses on Saturday. Um, I stayed up late to get one in her at, you know, 2 a.m. or whatever. Um it's it's an interesting medication so <laughs> she's not feeling great on it they're like, big pills right? they're, they're very big pills yeah. yeah um they were compounded which means it's not like they just come from a manufacturer like the pharmacy made them right they put the little stuff in the pill in the capsules um so she gets two pills three times a day for two weeks Ugh. and and I was looking at the bottle that came from the compounding pharmacy and it's like hazard, wear gloves and whatever. And I was like, that's weird. That's that for it compounding that. it. That's yeah, for that, the pharmacist. This must be a warning that they put on all the medicines that they ship out. And then on Monday, when I was when we were in for the Morris Animal Foundation, I was telling Dr. Stacey, I was like, yeah, you know, Hopper has this MRSA infection. She's on this medicine. And she's like, yeah, isn't it interesting that that medicine causes aplastic anemia in like some people? <laughs> like they didn't even think about that. And then a few people died. And I was like, 
Ooh. That's very interesting. It's very bad. <laughs> she just casually like, yeah, it turns out if you touch it, it'll kill you. Well, she uh, thought you knew it. <laughs> she thought you knew yes, it. Yes, just casually mentioning it. And I was like, yeah, I saw that label. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I've just been grabbing the b- pills out of the bottle and sticking them in the pill pockets. Um, I had a little panic attack about this today, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, you're supposed to wear gloves <laughs> when you handle this medicine. Now, this is an antibiotic that they it also is given to people, not just given to dogs. And, um, most of the cases of this anemia, what happens is your bone marrow stops working. So you get bone marrow failure. So your body stops producing red blood cells. Basically you can totally die from this. Uh, like the way that it's treated, it's irreversible. So it's not like, oh, you temporarily, your bone marrow stops working, but then it comes back. Nope. You just get irreversible bone marrow failure. They can sometimes fix it with a bone marrow transplant, but it's like extremely serious. Um, Calling that anemia uh, is a very anemic way of referring to it. That's just such a weak, that's anemia. No, no. Your bone marrow basically dies. Yeah. That's, That's bad. That's right. That's bad. Um, so, you know, it's a small percentage of cases. The numbers sort of vary, but like one in 10,000, I've seen some numbers as low as one in 50,000. You know, I think they just don't know. Um, most of the, almost all of the cases of it are people who are prescribed the medicine and they often have the problem the second time they're prescribed it. Now it can be small doses. So it's like, you know, I saw one thing and it's like, this lady was given like 12 pills. And then later on she had a follow up of like six pills and then she died from, from this anemia. Um, so most of the cases are in people who actually are prescribed this antibiotic, but I guess there have been a couple cases in parents who are giving it to their kids. So they, they just touch it. And it seems like if you're going to have the bone marrow, bone marrow failure, it doesn't matter what dose you get. Like you just are going to have it or not. So your Eesh. bone, <laughs> like it could just be like, what you know, whatever it is, they don't know what makes that happen. But like you touch it one time and like maybe you're the person who's going to die. And it doesn't matter like if you touch it the one time or take it a bunch of times. I mean, it, there's not a lot out there because it's a pretty rare complication. Um, but I, yeah, I really freaked myself out about it. And, uh, so I was like, okay, like there's, you know, I, I have to stop myself from reading too much about this stuff or else I get super anxious. So I just did like the basic stuff and it's like, there's a couple cases known of people who were handling it, like giving it to somebody else who have had trouble. They were um, licking it in secret though. You didn't lick it. <laughs> Anyway, I'm I'm using gloves now to handle Hopper's medicine. I will be very glad to have that medicine not in my house anymore. It really stresses me out. Put it all uh, in Hopper, yeah. Yeah. Um, side effects that it can cause in dogs. I mean, it can cause these sorts of side effects in dogs, so it seems much less common in dogs than in people. Um, but it can cause like, you know, gastrointestinal stuff, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, that kind of thing. Her appetite, she did eat all of her dinner today, which was good, but she didn't eat all of her breakfast. Like she, you can tell she's just kind of feeling crappy, like she's sleeping more. And she was very excited to go for the paddle board, right? I mean, she doesn't seem like she's dying, but <laughs> she's spending a lot of time like sleeping in the bedroom and, you know, c- kind of, I mean, I feel like that when I take any kind of antibiotics, like, oh, I feel pretty gross. Yeah, it messes up your tongue and it's, it's yeah. just not. So that's, this is that's the what strongest like. kind of antibiotic that there is because MRSA is the strongest infection. It's, yeah, I mean, it's intense. So yeah. I can see, like, given that, I can see why um, sometimes they're like, we're just going to hospitalize a dog and medicate them here, like use a, you know, an in-hospital medicine because it's pretty intense. Yeah, and dangerous, um, <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> anyway, that's all the dog updates. You don't have an update on guac jumping on the bookcase? No, I don't. Um, okay. He did chase a lizard up a tree today, though. That's pretty good. And then he tried to climb the tree. He did not succeed, but he tried really hard. He like, like grabbed it with his little it? claws. I mean, he, oh, yeah. he, has he got claws. He can full climb. stretch, grabbed the tree, and then tried to jump onto the tree. I mean, if it's an angly enough succeed. pine tree, uh, palm tree, he might be able to run up it. Yeah, no, he did not. 
So you got lucky this time, lizard. Next yeah. time we'll send Vank. <laughs> I don't think I've got any interesting. Thanks, like a squirrel. Walk updates. Yep. All right, so there you go. That's dog updates. Um, oh, and under... he can he can have his avocados and his toys out now because Boots isn't going to eat them and die. Yep. So that's... Wait, way to just bring it back to sad at the end. There well, you go. You know, good job. I'm just saying, proud of yourself. Gonna, things are going to change. Okay. Um, under ramblings, I I have this story from this week. So I was running. Maybe it was yesterday when I was running, and uh, and I went onto this little side street. And I saw some chickens in somebody's yard. And I was like, that's interesting. Like, I haven't seen chickens on this street before. And, <clears throat> excuse me. I, like, ran kind of down a little spur to the dead end and back. And then I noticed the chickens were not in the yard. They were outside of the fence in front of the yard. Is it in our neighborhood? In- yeah. Oh, it's nice. A, yep. It's that little, like, L-shaped street. Like, if you're going down towards Jumping Bridge, you take a left. Yeah. Um, and, uh... So I was like, oh, there's chickens out here. And so I pull out my phone and I'm like, hey, chicken. Hey, chickens. And some guy goes, oh, are my chickens out there? And I was like, oh, no, I've been caught. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, yep. He's like, they keep getting out of the yard, those little chickens. He's like, hang on, I'll get the blower. And I was like, this is going to be interesting. (laughs) I was like, they're domestic chickens they're and they i mean if you if you follow me in gen runs with dogs on instagram i had a video they don't look like the key west chickens um you know they're they're clearly like a more normal kind of chicken (laughs) and i was like can i pet them the answer was no they did not want to be pet though they weren't as skittish as the key west chickens um and so eventually i was like i gotta see what's gonna happen so the guy comes out with a leaf blower (laughs) Oh and he's my like, God. yeah, I'll get him back in. Turns on the leaf blower and just starts blowing it at the chickens. <laughs> and, and the chickens, of course, are like, what the fuck? <laughs> just start like running away and he just leaf blows the chickens right back oh into the yard. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of sheep dogs, but sheep leaf blowers is something new. Sheep chicken he leaf blowers. chicken leaf blower. I think it was electric. <laughs> Like it wasn't like a gas powered leaf blower. It was a battery, yeah. Yeah, so I think quieter. it had a battery in it. So it was a little quieter. It was just but yeah, he just comes them. out with this big ass thing and points to the chickens. And, and like the chickens were not actually blowing around. Uh, <laughs> they were running of their own power That's away from watching. the blowing. He turns it up when, when you're not around. He's like, God damn chickens. <laughs> I was like, You just made my day with like leaf blowing your chickens back into the yard. That is such a so funny. That's unorthodox. <laughs> I bet you that's not endorsed by the chicken holders council of america <laughs> i mean look given the way that they treat those chickens on farms these chickens have it good oh yeah you know occasional leaf blowers are just that's just enrichment for them that's for sure so uh so that's my ramblings the other I have thing a quick rambling oh, note go for it if you're gonna please conclude the rambling segment no i i am amused by the fact you put that like long segment i think you said it was going to be five minutes of just like the chaos of the dogs that was for super followers and patreons only oh so you made a five minute segment though i did yes if you're a super follower people were you can see it people were shocked at how loud and rambunctious and uh, and chaotic everything is behind the scenes so that's just a note to say it's pretty chaotic behind the scenes you think you see a lot like in the curated snapchats it's not. It's much worse. We don't try to keep the chaos out of the snaps. It's just like often we're dealing with the chaos. Or yeah, it's hard to film while trying to do th- do stuff. Yeah, and it also just can get a little tedious, you know, or whatever, boring, I would say. Where it's just like, yeah, they're, these guys are pulling on this, then they're doing this thing. Like, uh, it just gets to be a very long thing to watch. But uh, people were like, I thought your house was really quiet. And I, was, normally, I was amazed how fair, quiet your dogs are. To be fair, yeah. they normally are, right? They have like a 15 minute burst of chaos after their meals where they're doing the tugging and running around or whatever. They do sleep most of the time and they don't bark that much. Until Vink wakes up angry. Yeah, Vink or- will wake up and just start barking and then everybody joins in and she's like, oh, we're barking. <laughs> it's great. Let me go outside. All right. The other thing I had on my ramblings list actually is going to be our German word of the week. Oh, okay. So somebody tweeted. I don't think this person follows us. They said, "May some may some of my non-German mutuals explain German Burger King to me." 
and they shared two images from uh, Burger King in Germany. And I'm mm-hmm. going to read you some of the uh, hamburgers. They have pictures and then the name of what the burger is. The pictures are, are really good. Yeah. So, um, Spiegelei und Banana. <laughs> so, it's a like a Burger King burger so it's got like bun meat it's a whopper right it's a big i don't know if this one i mean it's it's big but it doesn't have like all the other whopper stuff so you just have the bun a meat patty and then a top bun and then there's other stuff between the meat patty and the top bun on all of these so spiegelei und banana is a meat patty topped with bananas tomatoes eggs like fried fried eggs eggs. yeah sunny side up uh bratwurst Und Nuss Nougat Creme. So it is a meat patty topped with a bratwurst with mustard, lettuce, onion, tomato, ketchup, top bun, and then Nutella yeah. on top of the top bun. I can't say Nutella because of copyright, yeah. but that's it. Yeah. Uh, Erdbeereis <sighs> und Pommes. So burger patty, french fries, strawberry ice cream with strawberry sauce. Yep. Burger patty. Um, Gurkha und Marmelade. Burger patty, cucumbers, I assume some kind of red jam. Jam, marmalade. Yeah, I can't tell. It's just red. Mm -hmm. Um, Fish stäbchen und apfelmus. So, burger patty, fish sticks, apple sauce, Sauce. uh, sauce. lettuce, and top top bun. bun. And then there's one other. So, there's one real big one. Torta und beef. So it is, yeah, uh, that's right. there's a few of them on this one. <laughs> beef patty, slice of cake, buttercream, beef patty, strawberry buttercream, slice of cake. It's like a layer of cake. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, probably raspberry buttercream, fresh raspberries, and then a bun. Those might be teeny tiny strawberries, but uh, no, no, no raspberries. Those are, You're right. are you kidding? Those are raspberries. Teeny tiny. Vanilla so ice <laughs> und oliven. So burger patty, green olives, tomatoes, vanilla ice cream. Um, top bun. I probably skipped a the, couple, but that's a good picture. The worst one, though. The worst one is currywurst and broad herring. Oh yeah, I skipped that one. Uh, that's currywurst and broad herring. So currywurst. It's a total shambles. Um, so burger patty, currywurst, which is a it's like a sausage with curry in it, basically pork sausage with curry. But it comes with a special currywurst ketchup, which seems to be on there. It's like yeah, that's kind of yellowish sauce, curry yeah. sauce, and then a whole fried fish herring herring onions and burger patty so uh, oh, i'm sorry so... top bun burger patty curry worst with curry sauce whole fried <sighs> herring onions and a thing and so someone's oh like God. what the fuck like this is on the burger king website i had to look it up to make sure it was not fake it is not fake that was on the burger king website so yep. ingo please <laughs> explain what the fuck is going on well the German word of the week is Schwangerschaftswoppa. <laughs> Schwangerschaft is pregnancy and Woppa is Woppa. <laughs> Woppa is Wopper. But uh, so this was a promotion by Burger King, I think, to for Mother's Day to point out the point out, trade on, <laughs> publish, uh, publish the weird pregnancy cravings that people get that that women that well pregnant people get and purportedly to show i mean to purportedly go viral i think but yeah. <laughs> but they had a whole survey on there where it's perfectly normal and you shouldn't shame people for for schwangerschaftsgelüste which is pregnancy um, cravings lusting cravings yeah, yeah. 58% of pregnant people have pregnancy cravings and and here are the the mo the favorite combinations or, or ingredients is the favorite was gurkha and mang marmalade gurkha and you know a pickle and marmalade and the second one was was the fish sticks and apple pie apple sauce and the <laughs> third popular most popular one was currywurst with brat herring and then they talk about who who has who likes more salty? What percentage of, of people like salty and what's like sweet? So they have these supposed <laughs> supposed uh, 
you know, statistics here and stuff. But it's really, I think, to go viral. They did a good job. This was offered. These combinations were actually offered at, at a single Burger King, a big one in Berlin, on Mother's Day for free. So if anyone, <laughs> if any, anyone, I guess, but, you know, especially pregnant people, since they say they like this, wanted to come in and get, you know, uh, a, a Whopper with banana and sunny side up fried eggs they would get that for free on mother's <laughs> day so this was a real thing um but boy these pictures are are off-putting and i'm not sure they really are trying to normalize it or trying to trade in the fact that it looks really weird if you if you put together what people think they would like I mean, Ingo, so. I think somebody tagged you and they were like, Ingo, what the hell is this? And you sort of explained. And I think this, I think it's this person. Someone was like, um, that's interesting. I'm pregnant and I think these all look pretty good. And my husband looked at them and was horrified. I don't know if that uh, so, was in response to you or somebody else. So maybe that's right. So maybe this sort of sweet, sour, salty, sweet combinations are are really something your body craves when you're pregnant. <laughs> I mean, I have help. I'm never been pregnant so i'm 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 open to it and i mean they should probably incorporate that into their menu option i mean have it your way means have it your way if you want a freaking dead fish on your whopper you should be able to slap one on there let me read you this little exchange in the comments someone okay. says the torta and beef is probably the worst thing germany has done <laughs> and someone responds the worst <laughs> And he goes, I changed my mind. It's obviously the curry person brought herring. And the third person's like, bro, he's thinking about Nazism. <laughs> like, bro, he means the Nazis. I know, but he could have been, he could have been aware. It could have been ironic, right? Like the second comment could have been ironic. Oh, so here, I just clicked through. When he said, I changed my mind, it's obviously currywurst and broad herring. Someone says, currywurst is the currywurst is the best thing Germany has ever done for the culinary world. And someone says, then why isn't it called curry best? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twitter, it's free. Uh, you get all that funny. value for free. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, we lo- we encourage you to look it up. Schwangerschaft, it's burgerking.de. Schwangerschaft Whopper, or frankly, you can just type in Burger King pregnancy burgers or Burger King Mother's Day burgers, and you'll get it because there were stories about it. I think in the U.S. media too. There were, yeah. So you'll. It's worth looking at these pictures. There, these creations actually existed. And it's something. It's yep. something. They're visuals. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, okay, so that's German word of the week. And now it's time for Taste of the Keys. It's <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> uh, Taste of the Keys. This is suggested by Inga this week. Monroe County Fire Rescue helps with dogs accidentally locked in car. Big Pine Key, Florida. Billy Nichols, resident of Big Pine Key, extended her gratitude to Monroe County Fire Rescue Station 13's C-Shift crew for responding to her unique emergency situation last Thursday. She was pet-sitting her daughter's dogs, Bubba, 14, and Bella, 12, and while loading them in her car, one of them inadvertently locked the doors. <laughs> I like to think they, they were doing some new. She's like, okay, we're going to go to the vet, and they're like, new, lock. Yeah. <laughs> like, that? yeah the other one inadvertently turned on the radio <laughs> <laughs> she says the crew is very professional friendly and eager to assist in coordination with mcso that's the sheriff's office and anchor towing their quick action allowed the dogs to be rescued within minutes leaving animals or children in car for a length of time can lead to a serious situation that's it i just it, the thing that struck me is is this is like this is the newspaper for the keys Yep. This is a post you find on like next door. I mean, it's a real, <laughs> this is not necessarily news that every resident of Monroe County has to read. It's like this old lady to lock two dogs in the car and they were successfully oh, no. extricated. They locked themselves in the car. That's what she says. Um, <laughs> she probably had the key the whole time. She, they were probably just like, we're locking it. And she's like, oh my goodness, they've locked themselves in. I'm doomed. Call the fire department. <laughs> and then the fire department said, where are your keys? And she said, right in my hand. 
They, they just oh. pushed the unlock button oh. on the fob and rescued that, the or dogs. they smashed all the windows out and like were Pretty totally satisfying. gleeful. They're like, "This is like in the exercise. We gotta smash all these windows." <laughs> I bet if anchor towing was there, that they did some kind of like proper Jimmy breaking into the yeah Jimmy. Just one of those exactly. slim gyms. I, I mean, I don't know how they do it. They're called slim gyms. I locked myself out of my car once uh, when I was interning at Fermilab when I was in high school. And you didn't have fobs back then. Like you had to put the key in the door and turn it or you could lock it, like push the lock button. Actually, I had to push the lock down, I think, on the inside. Right. You didn't have. Like, you're you're not explaining this to me. I am old enough to remember when we had yes. stone keys and and <laughs> stone tablets instead of paper. Uh, for those yes. who have not lived without central a... locking was an innovation that my dad had in his his like work car. Oh, I mean, I remember when my dad, I was in college when my dad got his first car where you'd like hit the lock button and the horn would honk. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Oh, uh, we didn't have key fobs until. No, no. I was an old man. So, yes, you did not have a key fob. Then you had two different keys, one for the ignition, which was square, and one for the doors, which was round. They were on the same keychain. Um, and I mean, I guess you could put them on a different keychain, but then you'd. You'd either have to put the round key in the door to lock the door. You certainly had to put it in there to unlock the door to get in. And if it was cold outside, your locks would freeze and you couldn't turn the lock and get back into your car. So you'd have to carry a lighter in the winter to hold the flame over your key to make it hot. So then it would melt the frozen, what a, you know, what a Midwestern problem. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Did you never have extreme. that problem? I don't think so. We had a garage. Oh right? yeah, so that's right. so you know when you're bougie and you have a garage that prevents some of the icing because I mean we had cold. a garage, but it held two cars, and my car was the third. Yeah, no, yeah. It, that I mean, no, we did. I don't think I had. That's extremely cold. Yes, that's extremely uh, cold. Anyway, so I the to do the locks if you didn't have like power locks, which I did not. There's a little button that you pull up and push down next to the window. Pull it up, bloop, you're unlocked, push it down, you're locked. And it has so a nub get... on the top usually. Yeah, there's a little, it looks kind of like a golf tee, mm -hmm. right? That's and so you can pull it up. And you, you get purchased yeah. and you pull it up that way. Yep. Um, so yeah, like if you're in the car and you're driving and you don't want anybody jumping in, you can lock the doors that way. If you have a passenger, you have to ask them to please lock their door. If you want to let them in, you have to reach over and pull the little golf tee up to <laughs> unlock yes, their yes, door. Yes, yes, um, And then... You have to pull it up so you can get out of the car because if the door is locked, it's not like cars now where it, it will unlock itself when you like try to go to open it if it's locked. Oh, it's just locked. New, it's locked. So you have to pull it up to get out. And then I, I remember having a very smooth motion of like pull the handle on the door to open the door to get it out and then bop down the lock so it's locked and then get out of the car and close the door and did that once and I think dropped my keys on the way out right like i'm climbing out of the car and the keys fell out of my hand or my pocket into the car as i slammed the door with the door locked and then my keys locked inside the car in you know an hour away from my house oh. a dude in the office i worked at was super nice he's like oh i have a triple a membership like i'll just have them come and we'll just tell them it's my car and they'll unlock it for you and they did that's it was nice. great did yeah. they use a coat hanger they didn't they did have some kind of tool though and i think i eventually learned with a coat hanger, how to pop my door lock. If you have those little handle people's. things, those little nubbies, you can pull them up with a coat hanger. Yep. You like widget it through the window yep. Ga yep. gasket. I yeah. I feel like the window may have been cracked in that car. Not like broken cracked, but like I had the window open an inch oh, or something. Oh, that makes it easier, yeah. He may have been able to go in that way. Anyway, they got me in. Good job. Did but I you also didn't have this? dogs in the car. No. You know, oh, yes, that's because of this. No, no, there were no dogs. Um, all right. This I has think been the a long degree of difficulty is higher if the dogs don't want to be unlocked and they're like gnawing at the coat hanger and biting the police, <laughs> biting whatever they're trying to do. And they're very angry about this little little devils inside the car, Tasmanian devils. They they were little white dogs. I mean, they looked pretty tame, but uh, you know those little white dogs can be vish. If they don't want to be released, if there's yeah. a good song on the radio that they're trying to finish <laughs> listening to, and these guys are like. Harsh in their vibe. They're not going to be happy. I didn't go. I'm tired. This Aww. podcast is long enough. You've done a lot. You've done a lot. I'm going to look up how to kill jellyfish for you.
First, please look up if it is legal. That's second. <laughs> I am a vegetarian, so I'm not killing anything. But you find well, this out just, for your This own is self defense to protect Hopper. I would only do it to protect Hopper and your legs. <laughs> okay. I'm not just generally going to genocide him. I'm just going to get him away from our dock. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. You They're can nasty. just put up a net. How about you just put up a little mesh net? Okay. I'll, I'll look up how to keep them away before I look up anything more drastic. Excellent. All right. Yeah. We're, we're ending the podcast now. <laughs> oh, it's getting more. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Okay. Good, good. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being awesome and supportive to us. And uh, yep. have a drink on behalf of the Vodes. And uh, one out for Voodoo, yeah. But, you know, watch out that Ghost Vodes turns it into Vodes Foods. You never know. He can eat whatever he wants now. Yeah, he can. Uh, and until next week, Slava Ukraini. And don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. That's right. Don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. Bye. Bye.